Alrighty, let's get back to this. Um, taking a quick break. My voice is feeling a little bit better now. It's getting a little bit of a sore throat after the first one. Let's go back to USSR. USSR. I'm getting a lot of grief over the way I pronounce my R's and ORs. Um, you know, I'm Irish and I speak English English and I was also an English teacher. So, yes, in, uh, in Asia once upon a time. So, yeah, okay, I pronounce R as in or, but that's just maybe me. I don't know. I don't care. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we're going on to the Russians and yeah, a lot of premium tanks here for the Russians. So what's new? IS-3A, a tank I've only played one game in. Um, yeah, I've only played one game in the uh, IS-3A and uh, it's another tank I bought when it was available and just hadn't got around to playing. This is because there's no gunner or the, the gunner, there's no loader. Uh, gunner, what am I going to give this guy? Uh, just noticed I had some skills. So uh, we got firefighting. Yeah, I'll give him safe storage. There we go. That'll do. Um, yeah, so apparently the gunner has loader skills if I give him safe storage. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, IS-3A. I've only played one game and I can't talk about it, guys. I'm going to spend more time in this tank and hopefully, hopefully get something to talk about. In fact, actually, I played two games. Two games. First game. First game, I got absolutely destroyed by a Tiger platoon, a Tier 7 platoon. Uh, the armor just didn't seem to work and I don't know why. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, second game was actually okay. Um, yeah, it's a tank I'm probably going to have to have a big, big game in order to ace because a lot of people seem to be playing this tank and playing it well. But um, yeah, first impressions, my the armor was a little bit iffy. Uh, really, really iffy. Uh, turret armor was okay. Hull armor seemed to have being penned constantly by lower tier tanks but uh, we'll see we'll see um so is3a is a new addition to the garage but i can't really talk about it um tetrarch uh yeah it was this it was in my opinion probably one of the best gift tanks that wargaming ever gave out it is fast it is mobile and it's got an absolutely devastating gun for a tier two uh very very good tank the only issue i have with the tetrarch is the fact its view range is a little bit lacking but other than that, I think it's a very, very good premium tank, uh, especially considering it's a gift tank. And as I say, I used to think it was the best gift tank Wargame had ever given out until this, the BT-7 Art, which is a tank I really don't want to talk about because there's an is it worth it for the BC's BT-7 Art coming up on the channel over the next couple of days. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this tank. It is an, an incredibly, incredibly interesting tank. Uh, the entire BT-7 series was. Um, and the BT-7 Art is the best premium tank that Wargaming have ever given out uh, as a gift tank for free, uh, in my opinion. But you know, more about that when it comes to the review. Uh, LTTP, or LTP, again, a very solid tank. Nothing special, nothing spectacular. Uh, it's got amazing traverse speed, but other than that, absolutely nothing spectacular about this tank. It's got a decent gun. Uh, it was a decent gift tank and well worth keeping. Um, you know, it's nothing special, but it, there are definitely worst tanks out there. Um, M3 Lite, again, you can pick it up on specials. Uh, another very, very rare tank. Uh, extremely rare, but uh, over the last year or so, Wargaming have put it into the shop a couple of times. So this was the tank you used to get for completing the tutorial, uh, the old tutorial. And um, what Wargaming did, or what a lot of players did, was they basically sold the tank after it completed the tutorial and that gave them a free garage slot. And they probably regretted it afterwards because this was removed from the tutorial as a gift and um, became very, very rare as a result. Um, so the M3 Lite, um, you know, Fra or American Lend Lease tank to the Russians, um, it's quite fast in a straight line. It's got a decent gun uh, if it's top tier. Um, and uh, But the only downside to the M, uh, M3 Lite is the fact it's got very, very poor view range. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I, you know, it's a premium tank, so I'm never going to sell it. And it's rare. So um, yeah, I, I don't play. I can't remember the last time I played this tank. Uh, probably about two years ago, uh, but yeah, it's rare, so it's going to stay in the garage. Um, T127, uh, absolutely amazing, underrated, probably one of the best kept secrets in World of Tanks, because a lot of players don't play low tier, but uh, T127 is a very, 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 very good low tier premium tank, well worth picking up, it's very, very cheap, not a lot of gold, uh, very good tank for a new player to learn how to play the game in, because it's forgiving, it is forgiving, it forgives mistakes, the armor is sloped, 
um so yeah uh, a lot of tanks unless less they're firing he might have problems penning you it's very small it is uh, not particularly fast it's a light tank but it's more of a medium tank it's got medium tank speed and mobility uh, and as i say the armor is um you know incredibly good along with the, a gun that's okay i mean the gun is okay so t127 i do really recommend i think it's one of the best low tier premium tanks you can buy um and uh, i think it's incredibly underrated and i did a review for this in fact i've reviewed most of these tanks here's one i didn't review um the btsv again like the panzer 2j um very very rare tank was incredibly rare until wargaming put it into the store a couple of times over the last year or so um i don't think this tank is overpowered a lot of people say this tank is overpowered and it's very very expensive and everything else um this tank has been nothing but a big disappointment to me <laughs> again it's another tank that i really really wanted because i was a tank collector it was extremely rare i picked it up it wasn't worth the price guys it really wasn't worth the price um but uh, the reason it's uh, probably not as good as people think it is is because of power creep um, you know when this tank was first introduced and was incredibly rare it's incredibly fast I mean it gets 62 kilometers an hour top speed but there are a lot of other tanks that have been introduced at low tier that are fast I mean the PZ-1C is fast um, so you know there are a lot of low tier tanks that are it's still fast but there are other low tier tanks that are fast uh, again it's suffered from power creep because it doesn't have any armor as you can see it's only got 25 millimeters of armor uh, and it is incredibly sloped so it can be it can be troll but it can be absolutely devastated by anything firing he and on top of that uh, it suffered a huge amount from power creep because a lot of the low tier tanks that have been introduced into the game since have more than enough penetration even with your angling um, to penetrate you so yeah it's fast um, it's incredibly bad at turning terrible traverse speed and the gun is incredibly accurate or inaccurate especially when firing on the move um, so yeah um, this tank big disappointment and it's another tank it just occurred to me that I'm going to have to sit down spend a day in um, and review and I'm not looking forward to that day uh, Valentine 2 um, again uh, very very uh, uh, I would say I was going to say underrated but it's not really um, Valentine 2 it's a tank that like the BTSV or the BT um, or the Panzer B2 only sees tier 4s it only ever gets top tier so uh, it's a tier 4 it will always be top tier in a tier 4 game that's one good thing uh, it's also got one of the best camo ratings in the game uh, especially after firing its gun that's another very very good thing um, but it's slow um, and it's unmaneuverable and the armor is okay it is okay there are plenty of tanks that are going to have no problems penning you at distance the armor can be very very good but a lot of it is flat uh, and also the gun the gun is very underwhelming so it's a tier 4 and it gets less penetration than a lot of the tier threes and tier twos I've just been showing you so the gun is very lackluster um, but it, you know it, it will be top tier all the time which I probably didn't spend enough time talking about during its review and the premium ammo is going to deal with uh, anything you're going to be able to face at tier four so yeah um, Valentine 2 it's just slow it's unmaneuverable and situational as a result but it does have some strengths as I say camo rating is amazing um, and um, especially after firing its gun and the armor can be very very good if uh, especially at distance but uh, other than that I wasn't too impressed with the Valentine 2 uh, T28 e uh that's another new addition to my garage uh, over the christmas period um yeah this tank it's huge and the armor it either works or it doesn't uh, it's got an incredibly good gun uh this gun came on the tank originally and was then released in an uh in a later patch it came with the t28 uh this is basically a the mobility and speed are kind of medium tank standards and it gets a heavy tank gun um so you've got a medium tank that can perform as a heavy with you know armor that's okay um so yeah uh, t28e was actually a quite a good tank um i reviewed it on the day it came out i played a lot of games in it i enjoyed my time in the tank but you know it's not a tank that i think is amazing a lot of people seem to think it was very very good um i think it's good I do think it's good I think it was worth the money but I just don't see myself playing low tier Russian medium tanks anymore especially as I've almost finished the Russian mediums as you're going to see uh, Matilda 4 get a lot of questions about this tank um, I think the tank is very very good and I think the gun is absolutely terrible um, Matilda 4 it was on sale recently um, I I just dislike this tank so much because you've got to play this tank as a heavy tank due to its speed mo uh, speed uh, maneuverability it's actually a little bit faster and more mobile than the British Matilda 
but on the other hand you've got to compete with this gun um, so this is a tank it's uh, that gets the worst penetration even the premium ammo look at the premium ammo it's only 102 millimeter to 102 millimeters it's got the worst penetration even with its premium ammo of all the tier 5 mediums uh, premium medium so uh, the next lowest is the um, is the Ram 2 which gets 105 millimeters of penetration with its standard ammo and this is premium ammo so the standard ammo and the premium ammo the penetration is incredibly lacking and when you consider that the Matilda uh, Matilda 4 is a tank you're going to be facing against the new Japanese heavies um, yeah it's just you know trying to take on KV-1s trying to take on KV-220s even KV-1s um, and OI experimentals with this tank it's it does get special matchmaking but uh, this you got to play it more like a heavy and uh, the gun the gun just doesn't stand up against uh, enemy heavy tanks the armor is quite good but again the armor doesn't stand up against heavy tanks and quite often you've got to play this thing like a heavy I just found the gun incredibly disappointing and I didn't think the tank was worth it um, because the gun kills it I think the tank is okay but the the gun the gun kills the tank but uh, anyway moving on I've reviewed it uh, the Rudy what can I say um, I don't know what I think this is a new addition to the garage I can't remember um, since the last review but uh, the Rudy is is an incredibly oh hang on it's not it's or is it I can't remember ah, it doesn't matter uh, Rudy incredibly in good tank it's a t3485 that's as good as the t3485 in game it's a very good money maker very good credit earner and as a crew trainer it's actually quite good even though it doesn't get a fifth crew member because the higher tier Russian medium tanks don't have five crew members either so um, yeah I think it's a good money maker good crew trainer and good all-round tank it's as good as the t3485 in game and that's quite a strong tank anyway uh, on the other hand you've got the t3485m which is garbage and absolutely no point in buying it um the only thing this this tank has got a worse gun than rudy it's got worse speed worse maneuverability it's got worse view range it's got worse signal range. it's got everything about this tank is worse than the rudy um with the exception of the uh, armor the frontal armor is better than the rudy's is but this tank it just kept getting ammo racked I hated the tank um, you can you know I'm not saying you can't have good games in it but I think it's very very underwhelming and there's absolutely no point in buying a T3485M when the Rudy is in the game or the T54 Mod 1 is in the game there are far better tanks you can get other than this I think it is one of the worst tanks I've ever played uh, didn't enjoy playing it and as soon as I finished the review haven't played it since uh, T-54 first pro prototype I've only played a handful of games on this and I enjoyed I enjoyed my tank in it, our time in it um, so I aced it in my I think it was my first or second game and haven't really played too many games in it since but uh, I will be spending a day in the tank in order to do a review at a later date um, yeah I think you know the biggest issue for this tank is the fact it doesn't get special matchmaking and the gun is a little bit lackluster uh, especially against uh, tier 10s I mean 183 millimeters of penetration up against tier 10s is not great but you know when you consider 183 against tier 8s and lower tiers not bad even against tier 9s 183 isn't terrible uh, premium ammo is not amazing but it's good enough maybe struggles against tier 10s again uh, but you know the alpha damage is good I mean a lot of tier 8 medium tanks only have 240 alpha damage so this gets 250 um, the rate of fire is okay the accuracy is okay aim time is okay I mean a lot of people criticize the gun on this tank but uh, t54 armor uh, on the hull t54 turret which is actually slightly better than the t44's turret um, and then uh, the gun is a little bit lackluster but I think it's good enough um, so I think it's a solid tank as long as you're not getting it into tier 10 games so need to spend more time in the tank but first impressions of the t54 mod 1 have actually been quite good uh, Churchill 3 absolutely amazing tank one of the first premium tanks I bought and one of the first premium tanks I recommend anyone new to the game buys because this tank will earn you credits it will earn you it'll train up crew members uh, it's a it's probably one of the best crew trainers in the game because it gets a crew XP modifier unlike most other premium tanks uh, they all get crew modifiers XP modifiers but this thing gets the biggest one um, so there's no reason to go and buy a tier 8 premium tank when you first started playing World of Tanks that's one of the things that annoys me most about this game is the fact that someone who doesn't know what they're doing has never played the game before doesn't understand the game buys a tier 8 premium tank and then spends all their time playing the tier 8 premium tank because they're not losing credits and they're earning experience and yeah the, yeah it's not fun playing high tier high tier games in tanks or with teammates who 
buy tier 8 premiums as the first thing they do. Um, really, what I really recommend is is the Churchill 3. I think it is, I think the Russian heavies are the best line to go up when you're a new player. And I think the Churchill 3 is a, an absolutely amazing premium tank. Um, you know, about the only thing that uh, the Churchill 3 is not amazing at is armor-wise on the turret. I think it's a tank that you can learn how to angle, you can learn how to side scrape, you can use its gun depression, learn to to how to go hull down, use its gun depression. Uh, very, very good gun. Get special match. Excuse me. Get special matchmaking. Um, an incredible money maker and crew trainer and it's not fast enough to get you into trouble and it's not slow enough to basically be annoying like some of the other premium tanks at tier 5 so um, I think I think it's a very very solid tank and I would really really recommend the Churchill 3 as the first premium tank for anyone between the Churchill 3 and the T127 I think anyone who's new to the game those two premium tanks will uh, are very very good premium tanks to learn how to play in before advancing up the tiers but uh, anyway moving on to the other tier 5 premium heavy Russian tank, the KV-220 in all its HD glory here. Um, yeah, T KV-220 is a tank that uh, was is incredibly underrated. When this, this tank came out, it was a little bit overpriced. It comes out on special occasions. Um, a lot of people gave it bad reviews. Um, I didn't. I gave this thing an incredibly positive review and I think most people who have bought this tank and played the tank on the strength of my review have gotten back to me and basically said yes, yes, this tank is good. Um, it's a little bit underwhelming. It's actually suffered a little bit from power creep due to the fact, that, again, Japanese heavies. This th tank up against something like an OI, is it's going to struggle. But um, it's got incredibly good armor, incredibly forgiving. About the only thing that's lacking is the gun, which only gets 99 millimeters of penetration, which is good enough. It is good enough. But again, unfortunately, when you're up against tier 6 heavies, again, this tank does get special matchmaking. But when you're up against tier 6 heavies, unfortunately, the penetration, even with premium ammo is only 121 and you might find yourself struggling um so yeah kv8 220 an incredibly forgiving tank very good for a new player uh very very good crew trainer and i enjoy this tank and since acing it i haven't played it but i i've enjoyed i enjoyed my time in this tank uh is2 another incredibly incredibly strong tank another one of the uh berlin quartet tanks like the rudy i mentioned earlier um is2 just this is the tank that should be in-game, and the IS that's in-game shouldn't be in-game. The IS should be the premium tank, and the IS-2 should be in-game, because the IS-2, as I mentioned in its review, was the most mass-produced heavy tank of World War II for the Russians, and the IS that we have in-game was the test bed. It was the prototype. Only about 100 were built. So, really, this should be the tank that's in-game, and the IS should be the premium version, slightly worse than this, but this is just incredibly strong. Um, it's it's as good as, if not better, than the regular IS in-game, because it's a later tank, later version, and there were improvements. I think the frontal armor is better than the IS in-game, the frontal armor is better than the Chinese version of the IS-2, and the gun, I, it's just, it's fast and maneuverable enough to be a pain in the butt when it's not top tier, no special matchmaking, and it's just an incredibly solid tier 7 premium heavy tank. Very, very decent, well, it's not a very good crew trainer, but it's decent enough. Um, and yeah, if you've got a chance, if you don't own any other Russian heavy premiums, then this would probably be one to try and aim for when it becomes available. Uh, KV-5 uh, only played a handful of games in. It's a tank I need to get into and review and play, but I just have so many tanks, that's the problem. Uh, KV-5 was a tank that was removed from the game a long long time ago in fact it was replaced by the is6 as the tier 8 premium medium tank for our premium heavy tank for the russians um incredibly troll armor lots of weak spots very easy to take out if you know what you're doing but very very effective against lower tier tanks and it's got an incredible rate of fire and dpm even though the alpha or the penetration is lacking uh, so yeah a lot of people underestimate the kv5 but you know it's it can be fun. Uh, I just need to spend more time in it. Um, very, very good crew trainer. You can see you've got a huge crew of six crew members in here. Although the radio operator, where are you? Radio operator is never going to get a good workout because he keeps dying. But we'll talk about that when it comes to the review. Uh, IS-6 is, is a tier 8 premium I've reviewed. And it's incredibly strong, incredibly good. And it gets special matchmaking, which is rare now. So um, 
Yeah, IS-6. Really do recommend this tank uh, for a... Again, I don't like new players buying Tier 8 premiums. I think you shouldn't buy your first Tier 8 premium till you get to Tier 8. Uh, plenty of other choices to buy along the way that will help you learn how to play the game. But uh, of all the Tier 8 premiums, this is one of the ones that's most forgiving. Uh, forgives mistakes. It um, is very, very solid. The gun is lacking. The view range is lacking. You see a lot of people who don't know what they're doing trying to snipe with this tank, sitting back and sniping, or trying to outspot enemy tanks, moving up into a scouting position and trying to spot enemy tanks. Absolutely useless um, because, again, it's a tier 8 premium tank and people buy it before they actually know what they're doing. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I think it's a very forgiving tank. I think it's a brawler. I think it needs to be played on the front lines and I think it's very, very solid, very good. Uh, covered all of that in its review. Uh, moving on, a tank I absolutely hate and don't want to spend much time on, the SU-85i. This tank has its defenders. It has its defenders because, hey, it gets good DPM and it gets decent penetration and decent damage and decent rate of fire and Hey, it's got good DPM, Irish. Yeah, but there's nothing else that's good about this tank whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't. It has no armor. It's got huge weak spots. It can be spotted. Its camo rating doesn't seem to be very good. The speed and mobility are okay, but not as good as advertised. I mean, it gets a 50 km an hour top speed up here, but it will never ever reach 50 km an hour unless it's falling through the sky or going down a very steep hill. Um, Yeah, I just... I Every time I see an SUA, I, I see a dead SU-85I. Um, I don't think I've ever been killed by one of these things. And, you know, it does, it's a Russian TD. The camo rating is okay, but uh, it's just, it's just an underwhelming tank destroyer. And one of my other issues with the SU-85I is the fact that there are just better Russian TDs, which we're moving on to because you've got the SU-100Y, which I think is just a troll machine. Um, you know, again, it's a tank you're going to die very, very easily in, but speed mobility-wise, it's actually quite good. And that gun, the gun, the gun makes this tank special. Uh, talked about that in its review. Uh, ISU-122S, um, yeah, incredibly, incredibly strong tank tank. Again, uh, you know, if you buy an SU-152 and you put the 122mm on it, it's pretty much the same tank as an SU-152, but better in a few different ways. Um, but uh, DPM-wise, there isn't a single TD in the game uh, that can match this thing. Uh, it's just got incredibly good DPM. So you got a tier 8 tank with a 122mm on it at tier, five, or tier 7. Very good DPM. Very good penetration, or well, decent penetration, 175, 390 damage, but look at that rate of fire. Eight rounds a minute, and you're doing 390 damage. Uh, DPM incredibly high. Um, so, yeah, it's not as flexible a tank as the next one, though. So, SU-122-44, uh, incredibly flexible, fast, mobile TD. Uh, also gets the 122mm, doesn't get special matchmaking like the other TDs I mentioned before. Gets the same gun, the DPM is slightly worse. You can see that the ISU-122S had over 8 rounds a minute. This only has 7.5, but only 7.5. Still gives it absolutely incredible DPM uh, with that alpha damage. And, um, yeah, I think this is a... It's got slightly better armor. It's got better camo ratings. Again, this is a tank that existed before the camo nerfs to uh, TDs. So uh, the camo rating on this is quite good. Uh, the armor can be quite troll. It's sloped, especially against lower tier tanks. The gun mantlet is very, very big and very, very troll and bouncy. And the gun and DPM are just devastating. Uh, the only downside to the SU-12244 is the fact it doesn't get special matchmaking. But this is a tank that doesn't need special matchmaking. Uh, and again, people have been complaining in my YouTube comments recently that they get nothing but tier 9 games in this tank. I really don't know about that. Um, I mean, I think this tank can perform in tier 9 games, but um, I haven't played it in a long, long time. So maybe... Maybe, maybe there's been some tweaking to the matchmaking to make sure this tank gets higher tier games. I don't know, but uh, definitely top tier in a tier 8 game. This is an incredibly dangerous tank, and um, because of its speed and maneuverability, it can move across the battlefield, and it's not as situational as maybe something like the ISU-122S is, but uh, there we go with the premium tanks. Moving on to the regular tanks. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What have we got here? Oh, so many tanks. Well, actually, not that many. All right, LTTB, um, Curse Tank. Curse Tank. I am trying everything I can to ace this tank, and it doesn't work. Thing is, I love the LTTB. I love playing it. I have decent games in it. I have very good games in it, but, you know, I can get... I can get 
1300 XP in this and it's not good enough for an ace. I mean, so I, I've yet to have that big, big monster game. And I know people out there, some of you guys seem to be having so much fun in this tank and find it so easy to pick up aces, but I just can't. I'm just having no luck in this tank. Even big damage games or big spotting games, I just can't ace the flaming thing, but I'm going to still work on it. going to keep working on it because uh, actually I don't mind playing this tank. I find it a lot of fun to play. Uh, one of my newest toys in the garage mentioned this on a video over the Christmas period is the fact I was playing RT missions in order to get crew members and I got a my final crew member, female crew member for the uh, T-54 Lightweight. I think I've played about four games, maybe five games in this tank so far, and enjoying it immensely. Fast, mobile, decent armor, and great gun. Uh, this is as good as any tier 8 medium, and uh, it's a light tank, and has all the benefits of being a light tank, so uh, hopefully I'll ace it and bring you the uh, ace tanker soon, but um, it might take a while, because I think this is a tank that's so good, a lot of people, other people are playing it incredibly well, very difficult to pick up an ace, but we'll do it. We'll do it eventually. Uh, KB3. Uh, yeah, you probably have never seen this tank in my carriage before. Uh, KB3. Um, tank I rebought to get an ace tanker in. So, uh, as you can see, don't have six cents. Put a, I put my... Oh, I can't remember where this crew came from, but uh, they weren't very good. Anyway, put them in it, and they're 100% working their way towards the first skill. I've had a couple of good games. I've played it for its daily double over the last week or so. Haven't managed the ace yet, but uh, I'm not enjoying the tank very much. In fact, I would say it is the worst tier 8 or tier 7 heavy in the game, uh, especially considering I keep on getting it into tier 9 games, and this thing is absolutely terrible against tier 9. So the gun and gun handling are... I mean, the alpha damage is nice, but up against tier 9s, the penetration is lacking, the rate of fire is lacking, um, the accuracy, aim time, all terrible, frontal armor is terrible, turret armor is terrible, about the only thing the tank can do is side scrape. Um, so yeah, I'm not enjoying my time with the KB-3, but hopefully we're going to ace it sooner rather than later. Um, IS-4 is another tank I'm trying to ace at the moment. Um, again, I didn't have this the last time I did a review, so this is a new tier 10 you haven't seen me play yet. Uh, or at least you've only glimpsed me in other people's videos playing the IS-4. Uh, but yeah, IS-4, um, very disappointing. I was, you know, from replays you guys sent in to me, I thought the IS-4 would have incredible armor, and it looked very, very troll, and I've gotten into the tank since then, and either people are spamming gold, or they just shoot you in the lower glaces, or shoot you in the cheeks when you try to side scrape or angle in this tank. So, um, very, very... Uh, disappointing. Um, I'm gonna still play it, gonna try and get the ace in it, only managed the first class so far, and I'll get the ace eventually, but um, yeah, originally I was expecting to enjoy the IS-4 more than the IS-7, and it hasn't worked out that way, so on the other hand, the IS-7, what a beast, what a monster. So this is one of my latest purchases, I bought this in January, I think I raised enough credits in January to get the IS-7. Only played a handful of games in it, but so far uh, I've only got a first class and I'm enjoying it. Uh, very fast enough straight line, go hold down, this thing is amazing. So uh, yeah, IS-7, hopefully, um, because a lot of people play it, I reckon it's going to take a while to ace, but who knows. Um, so yep, I've just started playing the IS-7 and I'm enjoying it a heck of a lot more than the IS-4, which I was not expecting. Uh, SU-12254, um, another tier 9 Russian, and um, this tank... It's basically a upgraded version of the SU-12244 that I showed you as a premium tank. Same, exact same problems with gun depression, but, um, you know, good rate of fire, good DPM, fast, maneuverable, sloped armor that's uh, basically only going to be effective against lower tier tanks. Couple of weak spots on top, but other than that, I think it's okay. Um, I think it's, as I say, a little bit situational. My biggest issue with this tank is its gun depression. You've got to expose a lot of your tank to get a shot or gun on target, but um, it's for some reason, even though it's an unpopular tank, and it's for some reason you don't see very many of them on the battlefield, I'm finding it very, very hard to ace. So I've had this tank in my garage a long, long, long time, and I just want to ace this flaming thing and stop playing. Um, so, you know, recently I picked up seven gills, and so, I mean, I don't know, I think it was about 4.5k damage, and uh, wasn't enough for an ace. So, yeah, that's just this, 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 GD. Uh, it's cursed. It's cursed. Um, so, I've completed aces in a lot of cursed tanks recently, but this one, this one is definitely cursed. Uh, object 268, 
Um, again, another new toy you have not seen me play before. I've just started playing it. Uh, I bought it again just shortly before Christmas. Um, and I put a crew in there. And I have... Oh, because this is a crew that came on the 122S. So they had Brothers in Arms automatically. And no sixth sense. So I've been playing a tier 10 TD with no sixth sense. That's been a lot of fun. Having said that, Object 268, disappointment. Uh, I was expecting something better than the Object 704. Uh, I love the Object 704 tier 9. And I was expecting to like this, but no. Uh, for some reason, the armor feels better on the Object 704, even though it's a tier lower. The gun feels better on the Object 704, even though it's a tier lower. Um, the, the shell velocity on this is just awful. Shell velocity on this tank is just absolutely terrible. So the penetration is good, the alpha damage, no better than the tier 9. It's, you know, it's the BL-10, but it's not a BL-10. This is a M64, but you get the same alpha damage. So, you know, you don't get an upgrade. You get a slight upgrade in penetration, and you don't get an upgrade in damage. And you get a downgrade because the shell velocity is so slow. The shell loops its way to the target. So, um... Um, speed and mobility, I mean, are a little bit better than the 704, but the armor doesn't feel as good, the gun doesn't feel as good, so, uh, big disappointment considering it's a tier 10, and I preferred the tier 9. Um, moving on, KV-13, a tank I rebought to get the ace, aced it and decided to keep it because I enjoyed the tank first time round. I enjoyed the tank second time round. Uh, frontal armor, very, very good. The gun is quite, you know, good. The speed and mobility of the tank are very very good at least they were when the tank was first introduced into the game uh, 50 kilometers an hour was fast there are tanks that are faster now this was introduced and i was playing this first time around before the uh, the cromwell and the comet were introduced but uh kb13 i think it's just a pretty solid mid-tier russian uh, medium tank so i decided to keep it I don't know why, but I did. Um, but the only issue I ever had with this tank uh, is the engine is huge on this tank and it keeps getting knocked out if anyone gets side or rear shots. But uh, I don't know, I think it's a solid tank. Uh, A44, again, a tank a lot of people love or they hate. I don't know where the extra crew member is, but uh, people either love or hate this tank. Um, and I loved it. I found it very, very troll. I found the armor quite good and troll. I found the gun quite good and troll. But the only issue I have with this is the lack of gun depression, obviously, because it's rear mounted. Um, but yeah, I found the A44 quite good, so I decided to keep it. Uh, T44, again, um, uh, I think, to be honest, there's not much reason in keeping this tank now. Um, I bought this tank, I played through it, didn't ace it, and sold it. And then I rebought it, aced it, and decided to keep it. And then 9.6 came in, and a couple of other minor nerfs came in, and all of a sudden the T44 wasn't as good as it used to be again. So I enjoyed it second time round, haven't played it since. Uh, the, um, the gun is lacking, I think, now. Oh, it did get a buff, didn't it? It got moved up to 183 millimeters of penetration. So, yeah, I suppose it's a very, very similar gun to one of the tanks I was looking at earlier on. The T-54 lightweight. But, see, that's the issue. That's the issue. I mean, why would you drive a T-44 when you could drive a T-54 lightweight? The armor is better, the gun is pretty much the same, that camo rating is better on the T-54 lightweight, so uh, this is a tank that suffered, has suffered from power creep a lot. Um, there's pretty much nothing this tank can do that other tier 8 light tanks can't do better. So, um, yeah, I, I probably, probably wouldn't have kept it if, uh, second time round, if I'd known... I kept it before the introduction of the T-54 lightweight, so I probably wouldn't have kept this tank. Uh, don't think it's worth keeping. Uh, Object 416 is another one of these tanks I've gotten up to, uh, bought. It's completely stock. I don't have a crew for it. Don't have modules unlocked. I'll get around to playing it eventually. Um, T-54 is just a beast. Absolute beast. Uh, I finished the grind, uh, aced it, unlocked everything else as far as I'm aware. Uh, where are we? We're on the Russians. I think I've finished everything on the... Uh, yeah, I have. So I've unlocked the T-62A using the T-54. Just need to buy it, need to get credits in order to buy the T-62A. But then I'm going to have the usual problem of not having a crew for the T-62A, although I might might end up... Yeah, you know what? I'll probably end up stealing the crew out of the T-44 because I don't see myself playing this anymore. Um, and that's fine. So T-54, absolute beast, tier 9, Russian medium tank, worth keeping even after you've finished the grind. Uh, object 140, 
Again, um, very, very solid, very, very strong. Most Russian tanks are. They're very, very strong. There are very few poor Russian tanks in the Object 140. Very, very good. Fast, maneuverable, decent camo rating, good gun, good gun depression compared to the other Russian mediums. Um, but the only downside to the Object 140 is its weak turret armor. But other than that, uh, very, very solid, worth keeping. Uh, KV-1, rebought it for my ace tanker and decided to keep the tank because you can't be a tank collector and not have a KV-1 in your garage. It's iconic. Uh, for the same reason, KV-1S uh, rebought this tank for the ace tanker, decided to keep it because I put the derp gun on it, and you guys know I love my tanks with derp guns. So uh, that's why I decided to keep a KV-1S with a derp gun in the garage. Uh, T-150 rebought it for the ace, did it, and actually enjoyed the tank. Uh, enjoyed it much more than I did first time around. I think it's very, very underrated. Got a decent gun, decent armor. You can side scrape, and yeah, I actually enjoyed the T-150. Um, decent, same gun as the KV-5, actually. Uh, moving on, KV-85 in my garage because it used to be the KV-1S, and I spent money on camo and everything else. I still think it's a pretty solid tank. Worth using with the 100mm as opposed to the 122mm, but um, yep, yeah, very, very solid tank. I just don't play it because I've got too many. Uh, KV-2, one of my my favorite tanks in the game simply because it's a derp gun and you could just have incredibly good games um you know even when it's bottom tier it doesn't matter kv2 doesn't care if you're a tier 8 or if you're a tier 4 obviously it prefers if you're a tier 4 because it won't kill you but it can do a lot of damage to tier 8s as well so kv2 just a derpy fun tank and i keep it for stress relief and just to mess around with in platoons uh one of my favorite tanks in the game uh kv4 uh i kept this because i I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. Um, I enjoy it fully upgraded. I think this is a terrible, 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 terrible stock grind, and I did the stock grind. In fact, I mentioned it on previous videos. The KV-4 was the last tier 8 tank I grinded from stock. Uh, the stock grind was so bad on this, I basically made it a resolution that from now on, um, I'll look at every tank before playing it and I'll decide is the stock gun or any of the upgrades, do they make the tank playable? Uh, and if I think the tank is just going to be too bad without free XPing the modules, I won't play it. And the KV-5 is the reason for that. Um, or the KV-4 should be, I should say, is the reason for that. Uh, just the stock grind was so bad, so miserable. Um, when it's fully upgraded, I think it's quite a good tank or interesting tank. Uh, but I'm never ever grinding stock tanks again after our high tier stock tanks after the KV-4. Um, when it's top tier, I think the KV-4 is very, very good. Armor is very, very good. When it's not top tier, I still think, I still think it could do a job. It's a good side scraper. Um, I just, I don't know. I have a soft spot for this tank and I can't explain why. And, you know, if you had a choice between the KV-4 and the IS-3, I'd rather play the IS-3. But I still think the KV-4 is worthy of a spot in my garage. Um, IS-3, what can I say? Uh, briefly, briefly, I had an affair with uh, the um, 110 for the Chinese. and I preferred playing the 110. But very briefly, because then the IS-3 did herself up and, you know, got some buffs, and now I think the IS-3 is better than the 110 in every single way. So, uh, probably one of the most feared tanks in the game. It can do a job even when it's bottom tier against tier 10s. It's got a very, very good gun, the BL-9, good penetration, good alpha, decent accuracy. Um, it's fast, it's mobile, and the armor can be very, very troll. So, uh, yeah, you've got to have an IS-3 in your garage. Uh, T-10, uh, formerly the IS-8, which didn't actually exist which should have been the IS-10, because the T-10 is the IS-10, not the IS-8. So this is actually a completely different tank to the one that was originally the IS-8 in-game. A T-10 did exist, and it was originally the IS-10, but was renamed because, you know, IS reminded people of Stalin. So, um... Yeah, T-10, uh, very, very solid tank. Uh, I think a lot of people underrate it. Um, it's a cross between a heavy tank and a medium tank. It doesn't do the heavy tank very job very well, but it's okay. Um, it's okay. If you embrace the fact it's more of a support tank, unless you're top tier, um, I think I think the T-10 is, is quite a good tank. Um, fast, mobile, very, very good gun, and incredibly... You know, look at that view range. This is a Russian tank with 400 meters of view range. Russian heavy tank with 400 meters of view range. So I think it's more like the FCM 50T uh, regarding speed, uh, mobility, and view range than people give this tank credit for. Uh, ST1, uh, just 
just <laughs> again uh, exactly the same situation as the kv4 when it's top tier the armor can be incredibly good it's incredibly troll it's got a great gun really really enjoyed the st1 when i played through it and ground through it and i loved it enough to keep it um su152 because i rebought it for the ace tanker got the ace tanker and just I love derp guns so there's absolutely no reason not to have an SU-152 in my garage it's all the, because of that derp uh, ISU-152 uh, very very solid tank especially when you get the BL-10 unlocked on it and um, yeah you're going to suffer regarding armor and mobility especially against uh, higher tier tanks but on the other hand you can hurt higher tier tanks so they can hurt you you can hurt them with that BL-10 so um, yeah very very solid tank which leads on to the Object 704 which is better it took a little bit of getting used to because when you first start driving the Object 704 it just feels a little bit slower and a little bit more sluggish than the ISU-152 but basically give the ISU-152 armor and that's pretty much what the Object 704 is so uh, ISU-152 is as good as the Object 704 regarding the gun gun handling is slightly better on the 704 but you also get armor and um, if you've got a decent crew in there uh, where you're working on things like uh, clutch braking um, yeah the maneuverability you can get around the maneuverability uh, SU-101 is a tank I rebought in order to get an ace tanker in but as you can see I don't have the crew and um, you know I could put modules and stuff on it but no point yet I'm gonna wait till I have a spare crew uh, object 268 exactly the same situation another tier 10 tank I bought but I don't have a crew for it and um, I'm basically waiting to get an ace tanker in the SU-12254 because I'm going to be moving that crew in here um, so yeah unfortunately the object 268 are 263 I've had it a long long time and I've been waiting <laughs> been waiting to move the crew into it for a long long time but the bloody SU-12254 I just can't ace that damn tank um so yeah uh, I'll be playing this tank as soon as soon within moments within minutes of getting an ace in the SU-12254 I'll be playing the object 263 uh for the first time uh, looking forward to it and then finally the SU-142 which is the only RT I've got in my garage that isn't a premium RT or an RT I'm grinding. Um, I just enjoyed this tank. I don't know why. It's a little bit situational, obviously, and it's RT, but it's the first one I've come across that I felt was competitive. Um, uh, you know, you get to put vents on an RT, and that's so, so important with regard regarding your aim time and your accuracy. So, um, yeah, SU-122 or SU-142. First RT. I feel like a scumbag admitting that, but it's the first RT I've decided to keep in my garage. Uh, other than premiums or grinders uh, so yeah USSR is done um, Germany USA France oh forgot to check the tech tree almost almost done here um, so as far as the USSR are done um, you can see I've reached tier 10 on quite a few of the lines I'm still working towards tier 10 RT um, I'm waiting waiting to buy the uh, 212A I don't actually know why I think it's because I have no credits yeah that yeah I, I have no credits that's pretty much why I haven't bought the 212A yet but um, moving on to tier 9 Russian RT uh, as far as the Russian medium tanks are done on the original line I've gotten up to both tier 10s just need credits for the t62a and as far as the other the newer medium line is done um i'm going for the object 416 and we're going to be going up to the object 430 eventually but uh, again i'm in no hurry i've got so many tanks so many other things i need to do first um so yeah there we go that is the russians done um so we did the Czechoslovakia is done, Germany is done, Russia is done, and we're moving on to, maybe we'll have a look at uh, Japan. And again, Japan is going to be very, very, very easy. All right, I've got four Japanese premiums. I've got two regular Japanese tanks. So uh, heavy tank number six, first Japanese tank introduced into the game and it's not very good, but um, it's okay when it's top tier. It is okay when it's top tier, but it doesn't get special matchmaking. And it was the first tank that was introduced as a premium tank after Wargaming had, uh, announced that they weren't giving premium matchmaking to tanks anymore. So for me, it always felt like a tank that needs special matchmaking, but didn't get special matchmaking. So it's a tier six as opposed to the tier 7 Tiger for the Germans, so I suppose that makes up for things a little bit, but 
Just remember it will see tier 8s and I find it a little bit lackluster but um, I've got enough footage for a review. There will be a review. I spent a day in this tank uh, about a month ago. I just haven't got around to doing the review yet but uh, I will be reviewing this tank on the channel in an is it worth it in the coming weeks. Uh, moving on to the Type 97 Tiki which is um, a lot of people hate. A lot of people hate but I enjoy and I love and I gave it a positive review if you don't already own this tank. It was a gift tank but it's small it's light and it's got amazing gun depression so can you imagine the gun depression on this tank where the only thing you can see is the top of this tiny tiny turret um, it's got amazing gun depression and it's got a tiny turret and the gun is very very good for a tier 2 I mean it does the job so yeah um, it's a very sneaky little tank not fast not maneuverable but um, I enjoyed the Tiki I did enjoy the Tiki and I gave it a positive review even though a lot of people hate it um, this is a tank I dislike Chinookai uh, I'll admit it does the job it's a support tank it's a sniper it can do the, that job very very well but I think there are better there are much better tier 5 premium tanks I think this is one of the worst and the hit points are absolutely terrible so um, yeah Chinookai I don't recommend it but that's me I hate Japanese tanks tanks or I used to hate Japanese tanks um, up till the tier 8 uh, but anyway moving on STA2 um, I don't mind this tank it gets absolutely no armor absolutely no armor so the thing is you can't afford to be hit but um, it's fast it's maneuverable it's got a very very good gun it's got decent DPM and uh, it's got gun depression so again another medium tank where you can support where you can snipe where you can flank uh, as I say the only issue with the STA is possibly its view range which is quite poor 380 and also the fact it has absolutely no armor is very very unforgiving um, you know uh, has a slightly higher chance of bouncing a shot than maybe something like the AMX CDC but not by much not by much uh, but you know it's not bad it's not bad if you like playing medium tanks I don't think the STA2 is terrible my question is there are so many good tier 8 premium medium tanks you know, why would you buy the STA2 over something like the Mutz unless you were serious about training Japanese crew members um, but anyway I think it's okay I'm not a hater I know a lot of people hate this tank I'm not a hater I just think there are better tanks uh, moving on STA1 um, again exactly the same issue uh, absolutely no armor exactly the same story as the STA2 it's just a little bit faster a little bit more maneuverable and it has a the gun is a little bit better on the STA1 regular tank in game as the than the STA2 um, but yeah Japanese mediums um, I'm enjoying this tank I am enjoying the STA1 and I do enjoy the STA2 so this is the first Japanese tank I bothered keeping because it's I found it better than anything that's gone before it reminds me of the Pershing without the benefit of armor but um, it does the job so um, and the other Japanese tank I've kept is the new Japanese heavy the OI so I've recently unlocked this tank I've played about four games in it and it's troll it is troll um not great in tier 8 games but i think it's quite good um so yeah oh i hopefully the ace is going to be coming to you sometime soon i had a couple of games in this tank where i thought i was acing it but uh, apparently it wasn't good enough. So um, yeah, as far as the Japanese tanks go, it, it is a pretty sad story, the fact that I haven't kept. I've aced all the lower tier Japanese. I've aced everything up to pretty tier eight. Um, STA one, I'm grinding towards the Type 61, looking forward to playing the Type 61. I'm almost there. And as far as the other line goes, uh, I've just finished and I'm up to the OI. And as I said, I've played about, it gets its daily double. So I've played, looking at the XP total, it's probably about six games in it so far, maybe seven games. Um, so yeah, first class. And uh, as soon as I ace it, we're continuing the grind to the Oni. Uh, but yeah, there we go for the Japanese and that's it for part two. It is getting late. My voice is going and I'm going to need to take another break. However, like the first part, I'm also giving out some games on this particular video. So I'm going to give out a couple of Steam games on this video. All you need to do is leave a comment to be in with a chance of winning a Steam key for a game or two um, if you're incredibly lucky. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll get back with part three as soon as my voice recovers.